Good morning, everyone. Welcome to an episode of Coffee Break with Card, Laura del Cafecito's new sister show. My name is Laura Esquinones, and I would like to welcome you to the show. So come on in, sit down on your table, on your on your on your um, chair, or maybe your lounge chair like me, <laughs> and enjoy your cup of coffee with us as you sit down and listen to uh, the topic for today. Which, by the way. It's, uh, it's a topic that is very important. Uh, we will be discussing a condition known as PICA. Uh, and we will learn more about what you can do to help your loved ones with autism, should they be uh, living with this condition. And you'll learn what to do and who can help you with this condition. But um, before we get started, just say hello, sign in, let us know. We'd love to say hello to you. Okay, so let's start out by introducing to you your coffee break hostesses of today. As I mentioned before, my name is Lourdes Quinones. I am a card consultant assigned to the primary age group here at CARD, as well as a, being a pediatric physical therapist and a special education teacher. I am joined today by my colleague, Jasmine Castellano. Buenos dias, Jasmine. Welcome. Good morning. Buenos dias, Lourdes. Good morning, everyone. And as you know, Jasmine Castellano is an excellent professional in the field of mental health. She's a CAR consultant assigned to the youth group from middle school to young adults. And she's a mother of three, one of whom is diagnosed with autism. So welcome, Jasmine. Thank you. Olivia McDonald uh, is not able to join us today, but she'll be with us, God willing, um, on our next episode in two weeks, okay? So before we get started, let's review the rules we want to adhere to during this programming to ensure a safe environment for all of us. Remember to keep an open mind, maintain a positive attitude, and use respectful language. So um, Jasmine, do we have um, audience members to say hello or any uh, comments? to address at this time before we start? Um, we do not have any comments, but uh, we do have uh, Ito with us. We have Iris with us. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. This is an important topic, so I hope you um, stay with us and learn more about it and share this um, page and this um, video with all those you know who can benefit from this. Okay. And we also have Chris. Hi, good morning, Chris. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so um, let's get started. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, as I mentioned before, in today's program, we'll be discussing uh, PICA, the condition um, that uh, some individuals with autism may be uh, living with. And so we will learn by the end of this episode what we can do about it and who we can um, um, seek assistance for this condition with. So join us. We have a lot to talk about. Okay. So let's get started. My first question to you um, is going to be, what is PICA and what, uh, why is this a problem? Well, Lourdes, uh, PICA is a condition where a person it's uh, things that are in food, but is uh, repeatedly. Many children and toddlers put items that are not food in their mouth and even swallow them sometimes, which is very common. Uh, and this is part of, you know, their developmental stages. However, uh, this behavior usually stops as they keep growing and getting older, like around 18 months, give and take. Uh, but someone who has a uh, PICA, it continues with the behavior past their developmental stage. And then that's when we provide a diagnosis of uh, PICA, I'm sorry, PICA in English. So uh, recent prevalence data suggests that while 3.5% of neurotypical children exhibit PICA, 23.2% of children with autism display the behavior this number is even higher than the rate of 8.2% found among children with other developmental disabilities. So unfortunately, it's, it's uh, a very common uh, condition 
or disorder among people with uh, autism when compared with other uh, people with other disabilities. Uh, PICA can lead to other health issues depending on what items and how much of them are being eaten. For example, rubber bands and glass um, can damage the stomach and intestines. Nutrient de deficiencies and high blood uh, lead levels can also happen, as well as wearing down of the teeth, infection in the mouth, the stomach, intestines, the stomach blockages. Um, this behavior is also significantly increases a person's risk of poisoning due to them ingesting items like cleaning products. Yeah, and the, uh, when I was doing physical therapy, uh, <clears throat> I had various um, clients with autism who had pica, and um, it was a condition. I remember one in particular, the, his thing was eating dirt. And so he did develop a lot of um, intestinal issues and uh, a lot of um, malnutrition and blood issues um, that required intensive um, monitoring and uh, interventions uh, medically because of, of his tendency to, to seek dirt and pebbles and, you know, little tiny pebbles were his favorite. Oh. Anyway, uh, so why do individuals with autism um, um, exhibit pica? Well, sometimes there's a medical factor at play, such as low levels of iron or uh, zinc which causes the cravings. Another factor can be uh, individual sensory issues. Uh, they either enjoy the sensory feedback they experience from eating these items and or it eases discomfort they are experiencing. It can also be the case that the individual with autism struggles with identifying what things are food items or is displaying their behavior in order to gain or avoid something. So there's different um, causes or reasons as of why the, a person can um, eat uh, objects that are not, uh, that is not food or they are not edible, so. Yeah. So how do you treat pica? Uh, what, what can uh, families, um, what steps can the families take to, uh, to help their loved ones with autism? Well, Ideally, the specific uh, treatment approach for addressing pica, it will depend on the individual and the non-food items that they are uh, eating or consuming. It is, however, it is recommended that families get professional help to address the behavior, especially because of the health and safety concerns. It is important first to evaluate if the behavior is impacting their loved one's health they should reach out to the primary doctor. So first of all, primary doctor, they should reach out to the dentist, you know, because of course, I mean, if you're using your teeth to eat uh, glass, you know, or remote control or any, or dirt, you know, um, that's also important um, to, to, to make sure that you know, there's no nutritional imbalances, any sores in the mouth, damage to the teeth, that will help to establish how critical the situation is and prioritize the next steps. Uh, working with a behavior therapist, ABA, perfect for to, to assist the person uh, with uh, PICA. It's recommended to examine any behaviors which are also related to, to PICA, for example, uh, is there a predictable pattern of behavior before and or after the eating of non-food items? Um, it, this is something that parents can also assist a, a behavioral therapist with. Like you should, if you can have a journal, write the date, the time, what happened before the child start eating the object, what object the child ate, and what happened after. And sometimes I got parents that will tell me, but nothing happened. Uh, he was totally calm and out of the blue moon, you know, he got up and he started chewing, I don't know, the remote control. Well, uh, it's the most minimum thing. We cannot think about an a big incident. It can be that you turn on the light. It can be that you started cooking and the smell. It could be, I don't know, you have a pet. 
the, the cat walk by by the child or the person uh it could be uh, an ambulance or the sirens or the sound of a, of a plane it could be uh the neighbor mowing the lawn it started to rain you know or uh anything anything there, there was the most minimum event or change in 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 the environment uh and it, and i know it's, it's very hard but if you can uh try to have that journal you know that's very very helpful a behavior therapist can also help with things like teaching replacement behaviors or a skill building what is non-food item uh, if it's a sensory uh, issue involved, an occupational therapist can be helpful in identifying foods with uh, similar sensory experiences or safer way to address an oral sensory need like sensory chewing items. So we have the primary doctor, we have the dentist, we have the ABA therapist or behavioral therapist, um, and the occupational therapist. And in, um, in Cafecito, we, uh, Lourdes uh, asked me what about mental health. Definitely, yes. Uh, why? Because sometimes, I, you know, sometimes we do know that our people with autism have some difficulties with connecting with their feelings and also expressing their feelings. And also, we do the same. I mean, not only people with autism. And what do we do when we are, uh, we are mm -hmm. under so much stress or depressed or anxious or whatever the case might be. Either we start snacking more, eating more, or smoking more, or buying more, going to the mall and spending more money, or um, uh, whomever drinks or drinking more, you know, oh, I need a, a drink because I can't, I had a, a tough day, you know? So that's what we do to cope with our feelings. We don't sit down with them and say, oh, I'm feeling stressed out. And stress means that I feel scared or worried or angry or sad or whatever it is. No, we don't sit down with them. We are like, oh, this, what a day. I'm going to do, I deserve, which is true. Okay. And we substitute that. So our kids with, uh, with autism and those who has PICA is doing the same thing. The difference is that instead of uh, smoking or instead of eating the chips, they are yeah, drinking or eating things that they are not supposed to. But the behaviors is the, the, is the same thing. The object is what's the difference, okay? So that's why mental health is very important, you know? So they can also learn how to connect with their feeling, how to identify their feeling, and what other coping skills they can use to, to effectively deal with those, uh, with those feelings. Um, and also because the mental health therapist will support the parents because it's a very frustrating. I mean, I'm telling you, keep a journal, make sure that you are, you know, aware of any little tiny change. But the reality is that we have to cook, we have to clean, we have to work, we have to, like, we cannot be 24 seven. And I understand, trust me, I do. Uh, so I know it is stressful and it's frustrating and it's scary, you know? So having someone to talk to about those feelings is, is very, very helpful. Uh, there is also a number of things that families can do to help support the work uh, being done by these professionals and to keep their loved ones safe. For example, Autism Speaks created a list of initial recommendations for parents. They refer to a child, but many of these things will be uh, applicable for teenagers or even adults with autism exceeding uh, PICA. Uh, for example, or some suggestions are keeping a list of items that your child eats or mouth. Uh, share this list with your doctor, teachers, therapists, caregivers. Keep track of how often your child displays uh, the PICA behavior in a notebook, like I explained to you. Keep a list of the places and situations where the child is putting things in, in his mouth. Is, uh, was it when you were in the park? in the house, where in the house, in the bathroom, in the living room, outside, uh, some in the neighbor's house. I mean, where were you? Um, keep a list of the places, a situation, I, I said that. Uh, and keep no food items from your child uh, out of his or her sight. And oh, actually, if you can uh, lock them, you are not locking a food, okay? It's not that you are preventing your child to eat food, 
you are preventing your child from eating things that he's not supposed to. I mean, we keep our detergents locked, but we should when we have a baby, right? Because of, of the dangers of it. So the same thing. Vacuum or sweep the floors every day if possible. Uh, enrich your child's environment during downtime. Provide access to things that he uh, enjoys to do, like try to keep him busy with activities that he enjoys. And teach the dangers uh, about it and awareness. We know that social stories are great. Videos are great. Uh, the uh, website from uh, Poison Control that we're going to be uh, putting in um, uh, in the comment section is has great information about it, uh, about uh, the dangers of eating things that they're not supposed and how come they look alike. So um, those are things that we as parents can do, you know, to assist uh, professionals and our loved ones. Excellent. <clears throat> so let me ask you something. Um, is 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 there um, anything else you would like to uh, also share at this time? Sure. Um, the last recommendations come from the uh, parental guide for addressing uh, PICA by Autism Speaks. Um, they also uh, created a, a provider's version of the guide. So that's gonna be uh, also accessible. We're gonna be uh, posting that on the links. I also want to remind our audience that us, CARD, we do have safety kits. And the safety kits is designed for families who have safety concerns of their loved ones with autism, including poisoning. We have cabinet locks, medication lock box, poison prevention information. It is all included in that kit. Um, in order for you to get a kit, and I think you, I have uh, here so you guys can see a picture so you can have an idea. What do you need to do to, for you to get a kit, a safety kit? Well, you need to be registered with us, first of all. Uh, and when you get registered with us, uh, a consultant will uh, be reaching out to you and provide you and share uh, the safety kits and also talk about and provide educational information about any of your safety concerns. Um, That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So yeah, and that, and that kit has even grown a little bit more than that because we have now the cabinet locks. Yeah, that's an old picture. Now is a, we have more more items in the kit and the safety kit. Yeah. Anyway, so wonderful. Thank you for sharing all this uh, important information. I know that um, it is so needed, and so many of our families are are um, living with someone who um, is um, displaying pica behavior. So. Um, I know this is going to be very useful for them. So thank you for, for uh, to you and to Olivia for having put this together um, and brought it together. Um, but anyway, those of you watching, uh, whether you're watching now as we are still on the air or after we come off the air, be sure to leave us your questions um, or comments on the comment section. We always monitor those. If we're still on the air, when you leave those uh, messages or comments, we will try to um, acknowledge those on the air. But if you leave them after the fact, because you're watching this um, as a video instead of a live, um, we still monitor those. So be sure to leave us your comments or questions, and we will try to answer those uh, right there in the comment sections. If not, if we create a future program based on your comment or question, uh, we will be sure to give you uh, credit on the air for giving us the idea for that show. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And again, um, this brings us almost to the end of the um, program. So again, thank you to Jasmine and Olivia for doing that. And um, also wanted to remind our audience that we come on the air every other Friday. So not next week, the following one, that will be the 16th of June. Uh, we're in the year 2023, if you're watching this years from now. Anyway, and, um, 
And I also wanted to um, remind uh, everyone that, you know, this is a time that I, I usually ask our audience member to go ahead and fill out and enter on the, um, on the link that we are going to leave you um, to ask you to fill out a survey, short surveys, about six questions. It only takes about six seconds for you to rate us and see if this, infor this information is important to you. Um, and this is the way that we can justify the time that it takes us to put together this kind of information and um, be on the air with you. So we thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing that. Even if you've done it before, again, we need one of these um, surveys filled out every time we go on the air. So thank you again. And that does bring us to the end of the show. So we want to thank you again. Uh, do we have any comment at this time before we leave? Nope. Okay, perfect. So um, before we go, we'd like to remind us to please give us a like, share this video on your page, and with those that you know can benefit from this information. And be sure to meet us here every other Friday around 1040-ish, 1045-ish, because um, we do come from the previous show, this same show, but in Spanish, which is La Hora del Cafecito, which usually airs at 10 a.m. Um, and so that we can spill the beans with you on important topics related to autism. But until then, we want to wish you good vibes and hot coffee. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.